In the sanctity of our homes, we seek refuge from the world's chaos, a haven where safety and familiarity should reign supreme. Yet, history whispers tales of shadows that have crossed these thresholds, turning sanctuaries into scenes of unspeakable acts. Home invasion murders, with their stark violation of personal space, strike a unique chord of horror and disbelief. These stories remind us of a chilling duality. Within the walls that shelter and protect us, there can also lurk a vulnerability, exposed only when the unthinkable shatters our illusion of safety. Each case is a jarring reminder of how the line between the ordinary and the extraordinary can be terrifyingly thin. We are about to embark on an exploration of two such stories. The first unravels a twisted path to resolution, a bizarre and unexpected twist that casts a new light on a seemingly ordinary tragedy. The second remains shrouded in the shadows of the unknown, an unsolved enigma that continues to haunt with its unanswered questions. As we delve into these narratives, we confront not just the details of the crimes, but the profound impact they have on our understanding of safety, privacy, and the unpredictable nature of the human psyche. The serene streets of Mansfield, Nottinghamshire, concealed a sinister secret beneath the ordinary facade of two Blenheim clothes. This is the story of the Witcherly Murders, a disturbing narrative of deception, greed, and murder. William and Patricia Witcherly were an enigmatic couple in the small English town. William, born in the early 20th century, and Patricia, several decades his junior, lived a life shielded from the prying eyes of their neighbours. Their reclusive nature only deepened the mystery that surrounded them. In the autumn of 1998, the couple disappeared. The event passed almost unnoticed. No cries for help, no apparent struggle, just a haunting silence that settled over their home. Neighbours whispered theories. Perhaps the couple had moved or passed away quietly. But the truth was far darker than anyone could imagine. The vanishing remained an unsolved mystery for years. Their house, a silent witness to their disappearance, stood still in time. Overgrown weeds choked the garden and the curtains were perpetually drawn, yet someone continued to handle their affairs, paying bills and sending occasional letters in their name. These acts, unbeknownst to all, were the first pieces in a complex puzzle of deceit. The unravelling began in 2012, propelled by the financial desperation of Susan and Christopher Edwards, the couple's daughter and son-in-law. Faced with mounting debts, they decided to sell the missing couple's property. This decision unwittingly set in motion a chain of events that would expose a shocking truth. A vigilant solicitor involved in the property sale grew suspicious about the couple's whereabouts. His probing inquiries prompted a police investigation that soon uncovered a series of disturbing financial activities. It became evident that someone had been systematically withdrawing the couple's pensions and benefits, even years after they had vanished. In April 2013, the investigation led police to the garden of the Witcherleys' home. There, in a shallow grave, lay the remains of William and Patricia. Forensic evidence painted a gruesome picture. The couple had been shot and hastily buried. This macabre discovery sent shockwaves through Mansfield and turned the investigation towards Susan and Christopher Edwards. As the investigation into the murders deepened, the once tranquil town of Mansfield 
found itself at the heart of a chilling crime story. The discovery of their bodies in their own backyard shifted the focus squarely onto Susan and Christopher Edwards. The couple, initially denying any involvement in the disappearance and deaths, soon faced a barrage of evidence that they could not refute. Confronted with the grim reality of forensic findings and financial records, their facade of innocence crumbled. Under pressure, Susan and Christopher's story began to unravel. They confessed to the murders, but their accounts were laced with attempts to justify their actions. They claimed that a family dispute over money led to the fatal shooting of the couple over the May Bank holiday weekend in 1998. According to them, the argument escalated, resulting in Christopher shooting the elderly couple in a supposed act of self-defense However, the police uncovered a far more sinister motive. The Edwards, burdened by financial difficulties, had seen an opportunity in the death of the Wycherleys. They embarked on an elaborate cover-up that lasted for over 15 years. Susan and Christopher meticulously forged the Wycherleys' signatures on documents, sent out Christmas cards to relatives, and continued withdrawing the couple's pensions and benefits. They painted a picture for the outside world that the Wycherleys were still alive, all while the couple lay buried in the garden. The Edwards lived off the stolen money, spending it on everyday expenses and indulging in their love for memorabilia and collectibles. Over the years, they siphoned off a total of around 245,000 pounds from the couple's accounts. This financial charade continued until their own financial mismanagement led them to the decision to sell the house in 2012, a move that would eventually expose their gruesome crime. The case became a media sensation, with the public both horrified and fascinated by the details of the crime. The story of a seemingly ordinary couple committing such a heinous act then living a life of deceit, captured the nation's attention. The trial of Susan and Christopher Edwards brought the harrowing story of the murders to a dramatic climax, revealing the depths of deception and greed. In 2014, the trial commenced, captivating the nation. The prosecution presented a damning portrait of the Edwards as cold and calculating murderers. Far from the self-defense narrative they initially claimed, evidence showed a premeditated plan to kill and profit from the deaths of the Wycherleys. The court heard how the couple meticulously maintained the illusion of the Wycherleys being alive. They forged letters, managed financial transactions, and even kept up appearances with distant relatives all to conceal their dark secret. The depth of their deception was staggering, from small details like Christmas cards to significant financial frauds. The motive was clear and unambiguous. Greed. The Edwards had stolen a substantial sum of money, using it to fund a lifestyle far beyond their means. The couple had purchased expensive memorabilia, including rare autographs and collectibles, leading them into further financial trouble. This reckless spending, contrasted with the calculated nature of their crime, painted a picture of profound moral bankruptcy. The defense attempted to garner sympathy for Susan Edwards, portraying her as a victim of her husband's influence. However, the prosecution's evidence which detailed her active role in the deception and cover-up, significantly weakened this argument. The jury, unswayed by the Edwards' attempts to deflect responsibility, found them guilty of murder. The judge sentenced them to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 25 years each. The verdict delivered a semblance of justice, albeit posthumously. 
the murders left an indelible mark on Mansfield and the United Kingdom. The case raised questions about the vulnerability of the elderly and isolated, the ease with which they can be exploited, and the importance of community vigilance. In the aftermath, the echoes of this tragedy lingered. The Witcherly House, once a scene of a hidden crime, stood as a grim reminder of the atrocity that occurred within its walls. The case of the Witcherlies, and the appalling betrayal by their own kin, continues to haunt the collective memory of a nation. In the quiet rural community of Osprey, Florida, the year 1959 ended not with celebratory cheers, but with a chilling, unsolved mystery that continues to haunt investigators and amateur sleuths alike. This is the story of the Walker family murders, a cold case that has resisted solution for decades. Clifford Walker, his wife Christine, and their two young children, Jimmy and Debbie, were the embodiment of the post-war American dream. Clifford, a hard-working farmer, and Christine, a devoted homemaker, lived a life of relative peace and simplicity in their rural home. This idyllic existence, however, was about to be shattered in the most horrific way imaginable. On the evening of December 19, 1959, the Walker family's home became a scene of unthinkable violence. The family was found brutally murdered, their bodies bearing the gruesome hallmarks of a frenzied attack. The news of the murders sent shockwaves through the small community, where such brutality was unheard of. A neighbor, worried after not seeing the family for an unusual length of time, made the grim discovery. Inside the house, Clifford and Christine were found shot to death. The children, Jimmy and Debbie, met a similarly tragic fate. The brutality of the murders suggested a deeply personal motive, yet no clear suspect emerged in the immediate aftermath. The initial investigation focused on the possibility of a robbery gone wrong, but this theory soon gave way to more sinister possibilities. The lack of evidence of a forced entry suggested that the Walkers might have known their assailant. Several clues added to the mystery, a bloody footprint, a cigarette in the living room, and a missing family car that was later found abandoned. These pieces of evidence hinted at the presence of an outsider, yet no definitive links could be made to any known individual. Theories abounded in the absence of concrete evidence. Some speculated a connection to the infamous killers Perry Smith and Richard Hickok, the subjects of Truman Capote's In Cold Blood, due to the timing and nature of the murders. However, this link remains speculative and unconfirmed. As the investigation into the Walker family murders continued, the lack of clear leads and suspects only deepened the mystery, turning the case into a puzzle that has captivated and baffled investigators and amateur sleuths for decades. In the days following the discovery of the murders, law enforcement combed through every inch of the Walker household looking for clues that could lead to the perpetrator. The bloody footprint found at the scene was a critical piece of evidence, yet it failed to match anyone in the family or any known suspects. This unclaimed footprint, seemingly belonging to a male, suggested the involvement of an outsider. The cigarette butt found in the living room also confused investigators. It was a brand not smoked by Clifford Walker, hinting at the presence of a visitor. However, this clue, like the footprint, failed to provide a concrete lead.
further adding to the enigma was the Walker family car, which was discovered abandoned several miles from the house. The condition and location of the car led investigators to theorize that the killer or killers might have used it to flee the scene. Despite extensive forensic examination, no useful evidence was retrieved from the vehicle. One of the most haunting aspects of the case was the murder of the children. The senseless brutality inflicted upon them suggested an intense rage or a coldly calculated move to eliminate witnesses. This aspect of the crime added a layer of horror and urgency to the investigation. The shadow of Perry Smith and Richard Hickok, the notorious murderers from the Clutter family killings in Kansas, loomed over the case. Their presence in Florida at the time of the Walker family murders and their brutal modus operandi led to speculation about their involvement. However, despite investigations and even confessions from the pair, concrete evidence linking them to the Walker case was never found leaving their potential involvement an open question. The Walker family murders left a permanent scar on the community of Osprey. The case became a local legend, a haunting reminder of the fragility of safety and the mystery of human motivation. As years turned into decades, the hope of solving the case faded. The intrigue and theories surrounding it only grew. Decades have passed since the brutal murder of the Walker family, yet the case remains a source of fascination and frustration, a puzzle that has resisted solution, intriguing those with a penchant for unsolved mysteries. As the years passed, the Walker family murders transformed from an active investigation into a cold case, but not before a plethora of theories were considered and discarded. One such theory involved a local man with a known criminal record, but his alibi for the night of the murders stood firm. Another theory suggested a possible link to a dispute Clifford Walker might have had with someone in the community, yet, Despite numerous interviews and investigations, no substantial evidence could be found to support this. The randomness of the crime, coupled with the lack of any apparent motive, added layers of complexity to the investigation. With the advent of modern forensic techniques, the case saw a resurgence of interest. DNA testing was conducted on the evidence collected from the crime scene, including the mysterious cigarette butt and the bloody footprint. However, these efforts too were met with disappointment as no definitive matches were made, leaving the questions of who and why unanswered. The involvement of the FBI and the application of psychological profiling brought new perspectives but no breakthroughs. The profile suggested a killer, or killers with a propensity for violence and possibly a personal vendetta against the Walker family. But this, too, remained speculative. The unsolved nature of the Walker family murders has left a haunting legacy in Osprey and the broader law enforcement community. The case has been used in training law enforcement officers in cold case investigation techniques, serving as a reminder of the challenges and importance of such work. For the community of Osprey, the murders became a defining moment, a tragic story passed down through generations. The case has inspired local authors, crime enthusiasts, and even television shows all attempting to shed light on what happened on that fateful night in 1959. Today, the Walker family murders remain a topic of interest among amateur sleuths and professional investigators alike. Online forums and true crime communities continue to analyze the available evidence, proposing theories and speculating on the identity of the killer or killers. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office keeps the case open, 
hoping that one day, new evidence or advancements in forensic science will finally provide answers and closure to this enduring mystery. As time marches on, the Walker family murders stand as a testament to the enduring intrigue of unsolved crimes, a cold case that continues to challenge and haunt those who delve into its depths. Thank you.